Greetings of love in our Lord and Savior's name. Very thankful to be able to gather in God's house on Sunday morning. Thankful to be able to, to worship in song. Hopefully each of us as we as we sing the songs, part of our part of our purpose is, is the song leaders have put forth that effort is to is to add meaning. So I'd ask you a question because as we as we sang the songs this morning, one of them kind of came to mind there where where have thine own way, and it says there in, in one of those verses, it says, Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. So the question this morning for us, I, I think it's, it's, good, it's good for us to be purposeful in, in pausing and asking the question and say, do I come to church this morning with a, a moldable heart and mind? This week we had some guests one evening, Sunday school, teachers as a matter of fact and, and we had in the freezer a, a bag of ice that we had from a previous occasion time and it was so it was pretty hard it kind of partly melted into a block I took it and, and dropped it on the concrete as I usually do to try to get it broke back up again and we've all been in that situation where you know part of it broke up and a lot of it didn't so you're sitting there with a big block of ice. And I, that came to mind as, as, we, as, I, as I sang that, that verse. And, and you know, how, how often do I come to church with, a, with maybe a pretty hardened heart? And not that God isn't able. We, we know that God is able. But I, we also know that the whole process goes a lot better if our hearts are more moldable and if we're, if we're soft and ready to be molded into the image that he wants us to be. So thankful for the opportunity to, to gather. Thankful for our visitors who are amongst us. Welcome, welcome each of you with us on the pulpit, Brother Kurt Rassi from the Tremont Congregation, and always grateful when he comes to visit Brother Caleb and, and to spend the day with us. And so we will, we will look to him for the morning service and give him our prayerful support for the word. Greetings, repeating again as Brother Brian did, greeting in our Savior's name. Trust that that's our heart as we come on a Lord's Day morning to worship, as we come perhaps here, and it's a privilege to be here, or as we come to worship wherever we worship. It's so important that we have the, uh, the right spirit and we have that anticipation Thank, thank you, as again, for singing. What a beautiful thing that we have this, that this is, I'm going to call it a heritage passed down. We have this as an anticipation that that's part of our worship service is to, is to raise our voice in hymn sing. We have, we, have a, we have precious words and beautiful melodies. And I trust that that, that, that that heightens our appetite for the instruction that comes from our Almighty God. He wants to speak to us. There's a message today, and it isn't, it isn't a message from those that would stand before you. It's a message from Almighty God. And so our, our delight is in the presence of His Holy Spirit to come and to speak to our heart, to a prepared heart, to an open and a, and a soft heart, as we've been reminded. Thankful for the word here this morning, and indeed, do covet your prayers as, uh, as we would open the word of God and, and anticipate that that he would bring to us. Uh, Old Testament prophet Ezekiel has uh, opened here this morning. Let's read from uh, a few verses from chapter 33 in Ezekiel. The heading here, prophet as watchman. Another heading, God's righteous judgment. So, <clears throat> Old Testament prophet Ezekiel spoke to the children of Israel. Not certain if it was specifically to those of Judah or all Israel. 
There was, there was much that needed to be warned. There was that that was to come to hearts of people that, that, had, that had become, could we say, careless or even worse than that. And the message, the mission of the prophet was to warn hearts, to, to, raise, to raise one's um, yeah, thought and, and, and one's interest, concern, worship for our almighty God. So Ezekiel 33 from verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, Speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchmen. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus he speaks, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and turn and live, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Therefore thou, son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall be, not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Let's stop there. Uh, verse 13, it's kind of in the middle. There's, there's the people that are... That are um, I say challenging God's judgment, God's righteous judgment. But let's consider, let's consider the love of our Father, of our Heavenly Father, to warn those that, that, that would pay attention to Him, those that have their hearts open to Him, about that, that He implores, He pleads, He also requires of us that that would be obedience to his word, knowing of him and his plan, his plan of salvation that's been brought down to man. It's been exposed to our hearts and to our lives. And we have his word and we have his spirit. We have blessings, blessings abundant. And, and we have an understanding, a measure of understanding about what he asks of us. The watchman... We would see that, we'd see that fathers, right? Grandfathers, mothers, grandmothers. There's the watchmen that perhaps we'd perceive as others that speak to us. But we who have the word of God, we find ourselves in that, in that circumstance as being a watchman, right? Reading the holy word of God and then having those that, 
we're responsible to, perhaps responsible for, those that would perceive us as having, as having an understanding and having responsibility or authority? What is that that our lives stand for? There is that that our words speak to, and then there's also that that our actions are important about. And so, so the word says, as you know, you have responsibility. You have an opportunity, but it's a responsibility to be clear in that that you've gained from the, from the hand of God and that that you have portrayed, that that you've spoken, that that you've lived. It's not grievous, loved ones. It is not a burden, is it? He doesn't ask that of us, that he doesn't give us grace to carry out. It's not that that we'd find that is, that is a, a heaviness when we walk with him and when we're led by him. But oh, it is so important that we'd be clear, that we would, that we would live as we know, by his word and by the direction of his spirit. The warning is, the warning is clear, isn't it? If we would, if we would know that would be good, but if we have the responsibility of disseminating that, of distributing that information, that, that, that knowledge of the will of God, the, uh, the, the knowing of Jesus Christ and his love for all creation, and if we would be silent on that, how does the word read to us? Certainly those that have been given responsibility have that as a responsibility to speak the truth, to speak in love, for we felt his love, and we have that as our, as our opportunity to speak to others about that that he asks of us. Let's sing a hymn as we would go further here. Hymn book's open here, kind of in the center. Hymn 105 would seem to be very similar in the Zion's harp. Faithful unto death remain. And uh, verse 5 is, perhaps we can read together, verses 4 and 5. Verse 4, have you vowed to serve the Lord, neath his banner ever fighting, Flee the evil of this world, Satan, and his power smiting, till the victor there shall be waving palms of victory. Verse 5, thus our duty is made plain, trusting and in God abiding. Faithful to thy Lord remain till your eyes in light beholding see prepared there for the blessed, shining crowns of righteousness. Let's sing with prayerful hearts as you choose. M105.
Let's kneel and pray together. Loving Father, hear our prayers. We come before Thee. We are thankful to come before Thee. We are humbled. We are awed that Thou, our Father and Creator, our God, thus have this access that we can come before Thee throughout the day and at a corporate time such as this. Hear our prayer, we pray. We're thankful for Thy plan, for Thy provision, Thy promises, dear Father. Thou dost love Thy creation. We have felt Thy love, and we praise Thee for gifts and blessings that thou dost grant unto thine own. We thank thee, Lord Jesus, that thou art interceding for us, the Father's right hand, thankful for thy willingness to come to this earth. We say it often, we pray that it has a great place in our heart, a very precious place, that thou dost come and die, that we might live. We thank thee for thy willingness to come to this earth, to fulfill the Father's will. We thank thee for thy perfect life, thy perfectness, O Lord Jesus, being made sin in our stead, to reconcile us with the Father. We thank thee for redemption through thy precious shed blood. Oh, we thank thee for thy marvelous resurrection to demonstrate the power over sin and Satan and death and the grave. Lord Jesus, we praise thee. We have sung of thee this day that it's been gone through our minds of how precious a friend thou art, how great has been thy love for us, how we look forward, Lord Jesus, to living with thee forever in heaven above, as thou didst uh, endure the, the pain, bearing the shame, that thou couldst live with us. It's thy desire. Oh, help our minds and our hearts to be open to this, for it's indeed a bit beyond us as we're bound by the humanness, our human natures, our understanding at times, and indeed the desires that we find ourselves having here on this earth, that we forget about glory, or that we don't focus upon heaven. We aren't thoughtful of that, that delight, that joy of living with thee forever. Help us to recognize the time of preparation that we're in. Thankful for our body of believers to worship with. We pray for the loved ones here. Bless them, each one that comes in and goes out. They might be stirred, inspired, strengthened. They might demonstrate the love that thou hast first shown to us all. Pray for them, each one. And for all that would gather with a desire, let thy word speak to hearts, we pray. As the word and as thy spirit speaks to hearts that seek thee, we pray that they'd be filled and be uh, be receive the message that thou wouldst have for each heart to be faithful unto the end. Thankful for, we pray, we thankful for the heritage passed down to us, that there's been this desire upon our heart to gather on Lord's Day, to worship thee, to live for thee, to know thee, Lord Jesus, as our Savior. Pray as we would consider the uh, the time of the year that we're in and pray for our elder brothers as they would be gathering together. Pray that thy spirit would be mighty, that thou would speak and that there'd be open hearts to receive that. That we'd find the leadership that would direct us, that loves us so, that we'd be directed to know of thee and thy will. It's a wicked world, Father. We pray for grace to be overcomers. We pray that for all of thine own, for grace and mercy. And we pray for the lost, for grace under repentance, for those that don't yet know thee, that they'd come in an acceptable time to, to recognize the error of following the enemy uh, or of being between, partway between the, the way that would lead to life eternal and, and the way that leads to hell and damnation. There is no in-between. Father, remind hearts, we pray, that to be awakened unto the call that would go out to come to thee, Lord Jesus. Knock upon heart's door, we pray. Hear a prayer for needs, for the suffering of the sorrowing and the sick. Thou dost know each concern, the accident victims we pray for. Pray for the lonely, we pray for the discouraged. Pray for those, the aging, for, for souls that have that that seems to be being taken away, that that we've placed confidence perhaps in. We've desired and loved to have 
Oh, that thy name be glorified. For our lives here are that, to glorify thee, O Father, Lord Jesus. And so grant us thy spirit, that we glorify thy name when we find ourselves with that that we exalt in and joy in, or when we find that that is more discouraging, or that that, that feels the hurt and the pain, still to glorify thee. As we walk here upon this earth in thy will and in thy ways. So hear and answer prayers as they're brought to thee. There's much to be that we could pray for, and we ask that thou wouldst direct our hearts throughout our days to pray, to pray for our nation, to pray for, for the, the war to end, for the oppressed to find, to find relief, to pray for those, the, those of Ukraine, those of, of Afghan, other nations, and for the persecuted church, and on the list is lengthy, Father. So hear our prayer and hear and answer many prayers as they're brought to thee and gather with us. We seek thy spirit. As we look into thy word, we pray that thou wouldst open our hearts and speak to us according to thy will. It's our prayer now. We bring it in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we consider further back to the Old Testament and the book of Ezekiel, let's read a few verses. I've opened here into John chapter 18. Let's read a few verses from the New Testament. As we uh, consider here the events that Jesus endured as he's yielding his life for you and I. From verse 1, chapter 18, according to St. John's Gospel. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book Cedron, where was a garden into the which he entered in his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, where Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns, torches, and weapons, Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I've told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, of them which thou gavest me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into, thy, into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Stop there. We've read 11 verses of the uh, 
of the yielded heart of our Savior Jesus. I'd like to go back for a bit and, and think about the Ezekiel's writing, reading it and then singing the hymn together. I'm, I thought, I really haven't thought of the context of the writing in the time that it was. A little hard for me to, per to perceive the walled city, if you will, from, uh, from back in that day. The, the great walls that, that surrounded a city that gave some sanctuary, gave safety to the people that were, were in it. And so those within that city carried on their duties, their daily things, perceiving safety from those walls. That, that, was, that was security for them, I think, as I think of it. And so there were those that were chosen out that would, that would stand on the wall and that would watch for the walls weren't without any opening without the potential of being not as secure as they thought and there needed to be someone to watch on the wall. And so the prophet is speaking to those who would be the watcher on the wall as well as speaking to those who have that who have that understanding or maybe it's perception of safety because the walls surround them. And to the watcher on the wall, the warning is, you better watch. You better be in tune. You better be carrying out your duty to be observing the enemy or that that might cause difficulty, disaster within the walls to those who are relying upon you. There's also a warning to those who are within the walls because those who have watched and who have spoken the warning have that expectation that you're listening for the warning, people within the walls, and that you observe the warning and then take action that's appropriate. So, as the old, those uh, of, of that time, so let's relate that. What's, what's that to be watched for? What is that that is that difficulty, that disaster that could come upon or that would cause, cause more than difficulty, cause death to the people? And the enemy, as inspired, or the enemy as they, they uh, saw enemy peoples, isn't different from our enemy, and that's Satan. And so as they saw the, the warlike people that would come to take their city. So you and I, in the analogy, would say, are we awake? Are we, are we understanding? Will we take warning about the enemy and that that he would visit upon God's people? And, and we, we talk about Satan and we talk about the devil and, and, and yet we find ourselves in a world that, that finds itself very comfortable with the temptations and with the wickedness, with the things that are horrid, frankly, that the enemy visits. We find kind of that the, the story about the, is it the frog in the, in the water that, that stays in the water 
And as the water continues to get hotter, as it's made hotter and hotter stays, because the changes within the temperature of that water that, that the frog finds himself in change gradually, and it comes to a point at which it will kill him. And so, that's a good analogy about wickedness about us, loved ones, about the world and, and that that the world would want to have rub off on us, who are God's people, who know of the word of God, who know that there is, that there is only two ways, there are only two ways, and obedience to the word from the word that God has given us isn't just an optional thing. It isn't a sometimes one does and sometimes one doesn't. It's, it's, God's, it's God's direction to it. It's his command to us. Obey the word. Resist the enemy. It says resist the enemy and he'll flee. And so, so the enemy is about us. And as you and I read the word, the word calls out the enemy. Certainly gives us instruction about that. That is, that is what we should be and what we should do and how we should live. As well as, again, those that have responsibility, have authority. Say, this is what the word says. Loved ones, let's hold fast to the word and to, and to God's ways and recognize that there's a separation that needs to occur. Back to the, uh, back to the people of the olden time. For the enemy, <clears throat> who would be approaching the city, can one imagine that the people within would say, "Well, let's share, right?" open up the gates, and let's share with the enemy and have it be for their good? No, it would not be for their good. Neither, loved ones, for you and I, for the enemy of our soul, who would, who would be, who would find it, he, he, he would love to have us share our heart, saying that we believe in the word and, and, and obey the word except for the part that we keep for ourselves or are willing to share with the enemy. <clears throat> Sunday after Sunday, right? And as we read the word, the warning comes to us about the enemy and his way and how the enemy would encroach, how he would work his way, how he would cause deception, and that that he would do to, to resist the will of God in our hearts, but, but throughout, throughout our land, throughout, throughout mankind. So let's take that warning. Let's heed the warning that would come to us to be separate from the world, to be, to be diligent about knowing his will, knowing and understanding that, that he asks, that God asks, that Jesus asks for those to whom he's revealed himself, like you and I, and find joy in, in obeying as we're, as we're directed. Think then about the betrayal of Jesus as we've read just a few verses <clears throat> reminding ourselves, reminds me, <clears throat> reminds me of the love of Jesus. We have words, we have four gospels that speak it, but it is so <clears throat> good for us to consider, to consider Jesus the man Jesus, the Son of Man, and Jesus, the Son of God, and that that he endures, endured, and endures as 
as he's yielding his heart, as he's yielding his will to fulfill the Father's will on behalf of me, on my account and on your account, to fulfill the scripture, giving himself, shedding his blood, giving himself to, to, uh, to what man does in its effort to stop the work of God. What a yielded heart. <clears throat> this comes after the <clears throat> beautiful prayer, John 17, as we would, uh, as we think actually 15, 16, and 17, beautiful red letter, beautiful for us to read about, about the heart of our Savior, about the love of our Savior for you and I, and that that he felt for his Father as, as the words, he speaks words, and one can, can think of how the words are to strengthen him for this that he's to endure. <clears throat> it's not here in, in John's gospel, it is in the other gospels, <clears throat> about going to the garden. So this would be as he's there in the garden, as he's praying, as can we imagine the rustling of will for the, the he's a son of man and son of God and, and, that, and, that was a, and that was heavy. It was hugely heavy upon him knowing of that that was going to come as we just read here. Think about, think about Jesus and his love for Judas. I can't, I can't put that into my understanding hardly to sit there at the table with Judas with his with his knowing of the betrayal and yet his love for the one who would betray him how how do we describe love how how great is love how how effective is it how is it in my heart or in your heart love for those that would be against us, love for those who would fail us, love for those who love us. The example, the pattern is so clear. Still loving the one that betrays him. <clears throat> Whom seek ye? Here is Jesus. You can imagine the disciples behind him. And he goes forth to meet those dark. They have their torches. There would be that mob, that crowd, not certain how many. It didn't matter. They, they wanted to bring enough. The world would want to bring enough, right? As this mob wanted to bring enough, the uh, men and the officers, the band of men and officers, they wanted to bring enough against Jesus to to capture him. And, and what you and I know, if we know his love, we know that Jesus would have come had there been one. Had there been one with Judas, Jesus would have gone. For he was fulfilling the Father's will. The enemy still would be that way, right? To bring enough against us. He would... He would he would bring the temptations. He would bring the deception. You and I, with Jesus, hand in hand with Jesus, you know, don't look at the mob, don't look at the number, don't look at that that's overwhelming, but fulfilling the will of the Father. Whom seek ye? Jesus stands out from his disciples to go with them. Knowing, right, as the scripture says, knowing that he was to be taken to go with them. The other gospels speak of the betrayal with a kiss. Judas having said to those that were the band with him, the one that I kiss, that's that Jesus. That's the one I betrayed. There's a difficulty, right? We think about Judas. 
What a difficult person. What a sad, sad, sinful person, we'd say, to betray Jesus. Fulfilling the, fulfilling the scripture, but, for, but betraying his Savior, his friend, the one he walked with for all of that time. <clears throat> Jesus, as his, as his desire, his, his way is, protecting those <clears throat> that he felt responsible for. <clears throat> if you seek me, if therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Still taking the front, taking, taking the sacrifice to go and to endure, endure the pain, despising the shame for that that's laid out for him and for you and I to live with him forever. <clears throat> Final verse that we read here, put up thy sword into thy sheath, he tells Peter, Simon Peter, the, the one who's, who's quick to react, quick to act, and quick to react, who pulls a sword and, and would, I don't know how to think about that. As Jesus, as Jesus is out in front, let the others go, he's already said, and Peter pulls his sword and, and, would, and would fight. Put up thy sword into thy sheath, Jesus said. The cup which my Father hath given me, shall I not drink it? How do we respond to the love of Christ? This is clearly the love of Christ. The cup that the Father gave him was to suffer for me so that I could be, I could have this present possession of life in heaven, of, of eternity in heaven. How do we respond to love that's love like that? By loving in return, right? By reflecting that love to others. By, by seeking the closeness that can be the walk with him. On the other hand, what would be the response that would be a rejection of Jesus. As we, as we read and have understanding of words, what would be the response that says that, that I don't want to yield my heart to Christ, that I'm, that I'm okay as I am, that, that I want to have both in my life, both that that is according to the word and that that isn't. Was the rejection of Jesus Christ who, who knocks upon the door of heart of mankind and says, let me enter in. Let me be your savior. Let me be your best friend. Let me walk with you and direct you and guide you. Beautiful hymn. It's in our, in our uh, combined hymnal. As we think about Christ and his, his trials this time that he went through. What will you do with Jesus? Neutral, you cannot be. Someday your heart will be asking, what will he do with me? As we think of, the, of Christ and his willingness to suffer for us, for all mankind, let's consider that. What will you do with Jesus? Neutral you cannot be. One day, there will be a day, your heart, my heart. One day our heart will be asking, what will you do with me? Well, I'm thankful for the word this morning that the Spirit brought to us through Brother Kurt. Again, I don't know what thoughts kind of are going through your mind. Brother Kurt unpacked the Old Testament so well, and then that powerful account of Peter trying to kill the servant but, of the high priest. But the thought that, um, that came to me 
It's this idea of the enemy and the wall. Brother Kurt did such a good job unpacking that about how the people inside the city thought they were safe. But here's the thought that sort of came to me. I love the depths of the scripture. And as I think about the enemy, there's kind of this superficial, easy to spot enemy that's out there. So in the Old Testament, you think about the walled city. You think about the people inside the city and the watchmen around the outside looking out for the enemy. Very easy to spot. Here they come. In the New Testament, you think about Peter. Here, here they come with their weapons and their spears and their, their torches. There's the enemy. Very simple. Okay, that's the enemy that the scripture, t- there is an enemy out, out there. But then Brother Kurt challenged us to look a little bit deeper. A little bit more difficult, perhaps. That the enemy, the Bible says, isn't just out there. The enemy also, unfortunately, is in here. Those who are not born again, of course, don't have the Holy Spirit. But even those of us who are born again, we have this pesky, troublesome enemy in here, not just out there, called the flesh. And we carry the flesh. Even if we're born again, we carry the flesh. And so just to close, I'd like to read just two verses. Again, Brother Kerr already taught us richly about the enemy that's out there. But remember, he challenged us. The enemy's not just out there somewhere. It's also in here. The battleground is in here. It says this, uh, Galatians 5. Don't have to turn there. Paul says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. They're they're at war. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. See, the Bible teaches us so clearly that, yes, there is an enemy out there, and the watchman can see the enemy coming, or Peter can see the enemy coming, and, and that's unfortunate, that's a reality, there is an enemy out there, but let's never forget there is also an enemy that wants to get in here. And we are at war in here, the spirit against the flesh. And we have the tools, praise Jesus, to conquer the flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit that he gives us. But let's make no mistake, inside of you, This morning, inside of me this morning, there is a battle raging. And it is our job as ministers and grandparents and fathers, as as Brother Kurt said, to acknowledge that and then go to the Word. Go to the Word. What's it say in Psalm 18? I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. God is our fortress. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Let's remember, God is the solution to the enemy out there and the enemy in here. But the power of Christ and that good Holy Spirit that he has given us. May the Lord bless the good word we've heard this morning. Appreciate uh, Brother Kurt bringing it to us. And why don't we sing, uh, if you don't mind, that hymn that he mentioned, a call to action, a call to arms. What you, will you do with Jesus? I have no idea what the hymn number is. Hopefully you're right that it's in there. Uh, 308. We'll sing that one prayerfully uh, versus you choose.
We'd ask a brother to offer a closing prayer and also to include thanks. Let us kneel before the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we bow before thee in thankfulness this morning hour. Thankful first for the gift of thy son, thankful for the message today, thankful for the witness of thy son's victory, thankful for the teachings that have gone up from this place. We thank thee as we have not traveled here for many years and come back and are warm to find thy word still <clears throat> going forth in purity, the call to salvation, the warning even as was spoken of today, the warning for the souls of men. We would pray that this might continue until thou Jesus dost return that there might be a place of refuge here in this town, in this city, a place of, that men can come to seek the refuge to answer the question about Jesus. Dear Father, we are saddened by the opposition today, even as there was opposition in, <clears throat> throughout time to thy son in his opposition to the peace that he would bring between men, within men. For we know that this, as we have been warned, that the battle is within, but the victory is also within through thy son, Jesus. We we'll pray for this people, this nation, pray for peace between nations. <clears throat> we know, dear Father in heaven, that uh, thou dost have the affairs of men in thy power, therefore we pray for peace. We would pray, dear Father in heaven, for the less fortunate in this place and wherever there might be less fortunate, those who would be struggling with sorrow. We would pray that there might be comfort of thy salvation to many. And where there is not comfort, that there might be a change of heart, that thou would yet convert hearts. We do not understand all thy will, we understand thy will <coughs> within the hearts of men, but not between men. We do not understand thy will in all actions upon the earth, but we believe that it is thy power and thy goodness for these things to happen to men. Pray now that thou wouldst uh, bless us as we are together in fellowship, that uh, there's a meal prepared. We would pray that it might be a blessing to each one. We pray that thou continue to go with us according to thy love, according to our need. We would ask these things and thank thee in thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bring you love and greetings from our congregation, Tremont. There we have the greetings, brothers. Greetings from our Fort Lauderdale church in Fort Lauderdale. From Leicester, Iowa. From St. Louis, and thanks for the prayer, Brother Lauren. From Princeville. Any sisters? From Nashville, thank you. From Laddie, Ohio. From Peachtree City. Thank you all for the greetings, and certainly we would ask the our visitors to take the love and greetings of the Champagne Church back home with you. Announcements today. Uh, this week begins our uh, three-week uh, mid-service break. The first three weeks of August, we don't have formal services here at church. Um, Wendy and I do plan to host a singing, uh, outdoor singing, at our place uh, on a week from Wednesday, on August 10th. <clears throat> so all would be welcome for that. Look forward to having everybody with several, ac several accidents 
and loss of life recently, we thought it would be good to have a grief support um, group meeting this Thursday at seven o'clock here at church. Uh, so if you plan to attend that, please RSVP to Sister Amber. Please continue to keep Sister Lorna in your prayers with the passing of her brother, Jerry. The obituary will be sent by email when available. You recall last year we had uh, a fair amount of um, interaction and, and working together with the IFI group, the International Friendships Group. Uh, they are hosting a welcome picnic on August 27th from 4 to 7 p.m. With nearly 200 international students joining us last year, it's a major kickoff event. We can make connections, meet new students, and welcome these internationals to the U of I at, at Champaign. The picnic will be at Hessel Park under a pair of pavilions, so that's August 27th, about four weeks out. In addition to the event, there will be opportunity for, for helping with it or bringing food, and uh, please contact Sister Wendy if you're able to help with that. There will be more details in the announcements. Uh, due to scheduling conflicts, we had on the calendar that August 21st would be the um, new student welcome, and that has been switched to uh, September 11th, so please mark your calendars on that. And then just a reminder that the um, Elder and Brotherhood Conferences this week, certainly we want to be prayerful for, for all those, uh, for our elders as they gather, for each one as we have opportunity on on uh, Friday for the general conference and just for those at Bluffton as they, as, they, uh, as they host. There would be opportunity if you can't physically make it to the conference to listen to that live on the, on, um, the live stream. So the uh, details of that will also be in the announcements. So this will conclude our morning assembly. You're all welcome to come and have lunch together this time. <laughs>